Here in section 5.5 we're looking at uh, finding derivatives of logarithmic functions. So when we are finding a derivative of a simple log function, so here we have log or natural log, so it's ln, natural log of x, and our input for the log function always has to be positive, so that's what the absolute value bars are saying there. If I want to take the derivative of just ln of x, the answer would be 1 over x. Notice that the derivative does not have any logs in it, which is nice. So a more generalized form of the derivative of a log would be that we're going to consider what's on the inside, the input for the log, to be its own function. So the derivative would be the input, the derivative of that input divided by the original input itself. This is a lot like the chain rule. So when we look here, we can to think about it like this. We're going to take the derivative of the log, which would be 1 over the input for the log. Then we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So we're going to multiply by the derivative of the input. And of course, when we multiply across, we think about this as over 1. So we end up with input derivative of the input on the top there. 1 times the derivative equals the derivative of that input divided by the original input. Okay, so both of these ways will work. This is kind of a little bit of a longer way, and this is kind of like the shortcut. And this is basically exactly the same as that simple rule. Um, if we consider x its own function, then we would think about it as the derivative of x. So if that's the input, the derivative of that input would be 1, and then divided by the original input itself. Okay, so this is like a very simple form of that general rule. So in general, finding these derivatives is pretty straightforward. Here we have uh, f of x equals the ln, or natural log, of x plus 1. x plus 1 is the input for our log function. So if I'm looking for the derivative of this function, it turns out to be the input at the bottom. Let's go ahead and just write what that input is. That's x plus 1 divided by the derivative of the input. Well, the derivative of x plus 1 would be 1. So we get 1 over x plus 1. All right, for example 2, we want to find the derivative of our function. So the input here is x to the eighth power. So that would be x to the eighth power on the bottom of the fraction, and then we want the derivative of that input at the top. So x to the eighth, the derivative of that would be 8 times x to the seventh power. Now if we would like to reduce, we can reduce that. Let's just go ahead and do that. We have a common factor of x. We have actually seven x's in common. So we're going to reduce, cancel out seven x's at the top and the bottom. I end up with 8 over x. In example three, before I actually take the derivative, I'm going to go back to section 5.2 when we talked about using our rules for logs to rewrite. So I'm going to expand this using the quotient rule for logs. The quotient rule for logs says that if the input of your log is a fraction, then we can rewrite this as the natural log of the numerator minus the natural log of the denominator. I'm going to continue to expand and rewrite. First of all, ln of 1, we said the, if the input is 1 of any log, we get 0. And then I'm going to continue here. We have all of the input now raised to the power of 2. So I'm going to go ahead and use the power log, the power rule for logs to bring that 2 to the front of the natural log. So we get 0 minus 2 ln of x. Think about that as the input there. So which just simplifies as minus 2 times the ln of x. So I have not taken a derivative yet. This is section 5.2 uh, quotient rule for logs. And then we use the power rule for logs. Notice I have still not taken a derivative yet. Now that I've simplified using my log rules, now I'm going to take the derivative. It makes it a lot easier. So we're going to say, we'll bring down the negative 2, 
and now we have the variable that we're taking the derivative of, a ln of x. So that's, of course, we know that's just straightforward 1 over x. So when I simplify this, I get negative 2 divided by x. So using that, uh, those rules for logs to expand and simplify before we take the derivative is really helpful. All right, in example four, this one's actually very straightforward. Um, we're going to go ahead and just take the derivative. The input goes at the bottom, so that's 4x squared minus 6x plus 3. The derivative of the input for that log goes on the top, so we get 8x minus 6. This one's actually pretty straightforward, and we don't need any rules for logs to simplify before we actually find the derivative. All right, in example five, we're going to use um, a similar rule to what we just used in example three. Before we actually find the derivative, I'm going to rewrite the original function using that quotient rule for logs. So we're going to take the numerator of that fraction and put it into its own natural log minus the natural log of the denominator. All right, so we have rewritten the original function. Now I'm going to take the derivative, and this now makes it really easy. So now when I take the derivative, um, it's going to be the input, just of this first term here, is the input, and I'm going to put the derivative of the input on top, which is just 2. Minus, now in the second term, x plus 1 is the input, and the derivative of the input would be 1. So there's the derivative, and if I want to simplify, reduce each individual fraction, I can. 2 divided by 2 over x is um, 1 over x minus 1 over x plus 1. So pretty straightforward there, really nice using that rule for logs before we actually take the derivative. Now the next example we're actually multiplying, we have a variable x squared times ln of x, which is our variable that we're finding the derivative with respect to. So here I'm going to have to use the product rule. All right, so we're going to take our derivative here, so it's going to be the first, which is x squared, times the derivative of the second, and the second is ln of x, and we know the derivative of that is 1 over x. So here's the first times the derivative of the second, plus the second, which is ln of x, times the derivative of the first. So the derivative of x squared would be 2x. Alright, if you wanted to stop there, you could. I'm going to simplify a little bit. I'm going to think about this as x squared over 1, so this whole first term reduces to be just x plus. And usually, I prefer to write anything that's outside of the log in front of the log, and then multiply the ln of x at the back. So I'm going to write it just like this, a little bit more simplified version of that first derivative. Now the next few are going to be kind of combining some of our rules. The first one here is going to be special, and I'm going to put a couple stars by this one. We want to be careful of something. Um, this is the square root of the ln of x. It's the square root of the entire thing. The square root does not just apply to x, it applies to the entire function uh, ln of x. So when we rewrite this, we're going to write this as the ln of x, but this whole thing is raised to the one-half power. So this is a function raised to a power. Okay, so we're going to go to the exponent, the exponent uh, variation of that radical. So when, as soon as we write it like that, we have this function raised to a higher power. This is the chain rule. So the chain rule for derivatives. So in order to use the chain rule, we'll have to take the power, multiply it times the front of the function, write the inside function as is, reduce the power by 1, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Well, the inside function is ln of x, and the derivative of that would be 1 over x. I'm going to leave that just like that. All right, in the next example, we have 2 times ln of x divided by x. This is quotient rule. So we have a variable in the top and the bottom of our fraction. So we're going to have to use the quotient rule. And this is our numerator, everything there. 
So a pretty straightforward application of our quotient rule. It's the denominator, as is, times the derivative of the numerator. So that would be 2 times 1 over x. Minus the numerator, as is, times the derivative of the denominator, which is 1, all of that over our denominator squared. All right, so that's our quotient rule. So denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over that denominator squared. I'm going to simplify this just a little bit. Uh, if I think about this as x over 1, x over 1 and 1 over x within that same term are going to cancel out. So I'm left with 2 minus 2 times the ln of x all over x squared. All right, example 9 is very similar to example 7. Here we had a power that applied to the entire function ln of x. Here we have the same thing. This one's even a little bit more obvious. We have ln of x, all of that raised to the power of 3. So since we have a function, all of that raised to a higher power, then we're going to use the chain rule. So our first derivative would be, well, bring down our power to the front. So that's 3 times the ln of x. I'm going to use brackets instead of the double parentheses there. So it's 3 times the ln of x, that's my inside function. We're going to reduce the power by 1, and then we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. The inside function is ln of x, so the derivative of that inside function would just be 1 over x. And I'm going to leave it, once again, just like that. All right, now for example 10, we have a product. We have e to the x times ln of x. So this is a good reminder from section 5.4, how we take the derivative of e to the x. So first of all, I'm going to make note that we are using the product rule, since we have um, two, basically two different functions multiplied together. So our derivative would be the first, which is e to the x, times the derivative of the second, so that's 1 over x, plus the second, which is ln of x, times the derivative of the first. Now remember the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And I'm going to choose to leave that exactly as it is written. Now our last example, um, at first, might seem a little bit more complicated, uh, we want to find the second derivative of this function. However, as soon as we take uh, the derivative of a natural log function, the natural log goes away and we're left with something much simpler, something we've already actually done. So if I want to find the derivative of this, the first derivative, first, of course, um, we're going to say, well, that's the input at the bottom of the fraction, and the derivative of the input goes at the top. So that would be 2x. Well, we want to go to the second derivative, and notice that the first derivative doesn't have any natural logs in it at all. So this is basically just a straight application of our quotient rule for taking derivatives. So it's going to be the denominator, as is, times the derivative of the numerator, which is 2, minus the numerator, as is, times the derivative of the denominator. So that would be 2x all over the denominator squared. So this, what we just did, is really nothing new at all from what we did in chapter 3. Okay, if you want to clean this up a little bit, you can. Um, let's distribute the 2, so I get 2x squared plus 4. And I'm going to multiply those two factors together, that gives me minus 4x squared. And then I am going to combine like terms. So our second derivative then would be negative 2x squared plus 4, all of that divided by that denominator squared.